check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. We also got a musician suing Cody Rhodes, WWE and Fanatics over the American Nightmare trademark, claiming Rhodes isn't following the terms first agreed to in March 29, 2019 settlement. First reported by Post Wrestling, the lead singer and co-founder of the band American Nightmare has held a trademark for the term since 2016 for use in, quote, music, clothing, and entertainment services. Wesley Isold's lawsuit filed in California alleges trademark infringement, b breach of contract, intentional interference with contractual relations. The ban, founded in 1998, has toured as recently as 2023. He is suing for damages of at least 150000 in addition to treble damages of up to 300000 Related to federal trademark infringement, he is looking to recover legal fees. Rose has used term. He's going to need pain and suffering after dealing with all the wrestling fans that are coming at him online. Rhodes has used the term as his nickname for years, take on his father Dusty Rhodes' American dream. Not the first time Eisold and Rhodes have done legal battle. They settled in the aforementioned March 2019 dispute for 30000 when Rhodes applied for the trademark for wrestling-related activities. The terms were that Rhodes could use the term on merchandise under the condition that such items prominently used his name, likeness, or wrestling-related imagery in a size at least 75% larger than the American Nightmare text. One item I sold claims is confusing both fans of his band and WWE is Rhodes' crown t-shirt, which doesn't feature imagery of Rhodes or wrestling, but uses the term instead. Legal team reached out to Rhodes' legal team in 2022 about the shirt. Claims they were never they never were responded to. I'm not a judge. You're not. Well, here's the thing to me, okay? Here's the thing with these these deals. Yes. If they have an agreement and Cody didn't abide by it, then he needs to stop. That's it, okay? But whenever it comes up like you're confusing people, like people are going to see his American Nightmare shirt and what does that even mean? They'll be confused. Like they'll go, hey, you like that band? No, nah, it's a wrestling shirt. Oh, I'm well, deeply I think confused. It, I, I would think it would be... Say you go into a, I don't know, Hot Topic, right? Where they would sell wrestling and band shirts. And you see American Nightmare up there on the sleeves. And you see maybe a logo or some artwork or whatever. That, I guess, is what they would claim in, hey, you're supposed to have stuff up there that says Cody Rhodes. You're supposed to know it's going to be Cody's as opposed to our stuff. And I think... That is one of the things he's pointing to as an So he's saying that like if if I have a confusion in the market if I have a fan of the band and they see a Cody Rhodes shirt and they think it's a band shirt and they buy it, he gets the money and I don't? Well, yeah, and I believe it has been stated in there that people come to the shows wearing Cody Rhodes shirts believing that it's and that's their bad? merchandise and vice versa. Well, yeah, because if somebody you're supposed to have a deal with somebody and somebody Well, that is, part obviously, I just said that. Like if they made a deal yeah, and Cody uh, so, didn't abide yeah, by that's, it. Yeah, that's bad. But that's the, bad. The, conf I, uh, the confusion in the marketplace is always I, I don't understand well, what that even means. I need a lawyer to explain this confusion in the marketplace things. Like I don't want well, I don't want fans to be or a lawyer. confused. So. You are a reverend though. I don't know. I don't know if I got to renew that. Oh, really? I don't know how that works. <laughs> that was decades ago. I thought that was forever. I thought that was life. It might I be. Like, I mean, I don't know. Doctor of Divinity is forever. I got my Doctor of Divinity like little thing, that card. I got it somewhere. You can marry people and whatnot. I, I am actually a doctor, if you wanted to call me that, but Professor Dr. Brian Alvarez. I'm a doctor and a professor. What do you want out of me? Okay. Professor. Yeah. Third degree black belt. Professor. Don't yell at me. I didn't make it up. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, the show, Brian. Can I can I ask you a question? I, I didn't get a chance to do this. What, what, what are you What are you even starting? What What do you mean? What am I starting? Let's what hear it. You? Let's hear it. Okay, so I heard you and Dave talk on Wrestling Observer oh, Radio, no. and you were both making points about should somebody that's challenging for a title wrestle on the day before they're supposed to take on the champion. And Dave is right. This has happened a zillion times. I'm sure we've seen this how many times? That's on why Raw? I argue, but go ahead. Hold on. On Raw and on SmackDown, because, you know, there's always 
something that gets thrown in a challenger's way by some dastardly heels as part of a group. You know, we've seen that happen before. I know we have, okay? But I actually, I agree with you somewhat. And here's the reason why that neither one of you mentioned. It's not that she's wrestling Deanna Perrazzo. It's that Deanna Perrazzo got this big video package with mood lighting and drama, drama and all that stuff about her being the virtuoso. If she were to wrestle Harley Cameron or she were to wrestle somebody else, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. But the fact that they're building up Deanna for God knows what reason and Dave saying, well, that's good. She's beating somebody. Deanna's not anybody right now. And I'm sorry for her for that. But that's unfortunately has been the case. Good match with Thunder Rosa, all that sort of stuff. But she's not exactly being puffed up to a level where she's to me i don't know that was the biggest problem with that whole argument was it's not that she's having a match it's that she's having a match against somebody that now is supposedly built up you know as a big deal and you know if she gets beaten should diana perrazzo move on to take the title match that's where if she was beating a bum it wouldn't be an issue yeah sometimes dave and i get in a big back and forth yes and you go on the board and people go they're both largely making the same point, but they're not actually listening to each other. You know, oh, people I don't say go that all on the time? board. I don't go on the board. Okay. No. Well, none of you actually listen to what I had to say. Okay? Not me? Me? No, I didn't? No, you didn't. Listen. I didn't? Okay. The reason I argued with Dave is because I said a very specific thing, which is why is she having a match with a big star the day before? She's getting, I did not say on the last show. Everybody keeps going back to the last show. Well, oftentimes on Raw, Raw is between six and seven days before the next pay-per-view. I specifically said the day before, not the week before, is not Deanna the Raw before Saturday or Sunday. I said the day before. If this was a real, I don't even care, okay? The reason I argued it is because Dave said it happened all the time. It does not. It does not happen all the time. It will happen somewhat regularly on a Raw before a pay-per-view. It does not happen all the time the night before a pay-per-view. Now, the other big issue with his argument is he goes, Oh, back in the 70s, you know, way back in the day. Cow it Palace, happened the same day or whatever. No. When that happened, when somebody challenging for a title was going to wrestle the day before as a warm-up match, it was exactly that, a squash match. Some rando jobber. Ricky Morton's getting a shot against Ric Flair on, on uh, Sunday, Saturday night, Whatever, he wrestles some job guy, beats him in 10 seconds, whatever. That's your warm-up match. It's not Ricky Morton is challenging for the NWA title on Sunday. And on Saturday night, he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Raging Bull Manny Fernandez. They're going to go 15 minutes. That would never happen. Now, sure, if you want to go back and find at a time when it happened, that's okay. He said it happens all the time. This was the same reason I argued with him about the overrun. Remember we were talking about the overrun? And yeah. he said the AW overrun always goes up? It didn't. And somebody went back and looked, and in fact it doesn't. So that's why I argued for so long, this idea that it always happens. I, ve I was very specific in my argument. Having a championship match on Saturday and on Friday night, Having a match with a star, it doesn't make any sense. If this were real, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't even bother me. I don't care who she wrestles tonight. I cared about being told this happens all the time, which it doesn't. So that's why I was ranting about it. And then, of course, everyone's like, oh, well, M M Raw, Seth wrestled on Raw before. I didn't say Raw. Raw's not the night before a pay-per-view unless there's a pay-per-view on Tuesday, which there isn't. So that's it. You happy you set me off? You happy you lit the fuse? Uh, you know what? If, if I was wrong in anything that I said, Brian, I deeply apologize. And I am, I am definitely fulfilled uh, after hearing you clear things up. Thank you.
Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.